gets out, creep a lot of the higher end camps to quickly get up in levels. They'll use their Blade Master, their Farseer, to go around creeping. Instead, you'll see Crazy Cat's keeping his Farseer close to his army, but away from XP range on his Shadow Hunter. Shadow Hunter just now level 5, and he does have Scrolls of Protection and a Scroll of Healing on there. If you don't already buy those from the sh uh, maps that have the Goblin Laboratory shops, definitely, definitely recommend getting those versus any race, versus any type of army makeup. Scrolls Protection and Scroll Healing are always a good investment. They help keep your army alive uh, longer during the fights, and when it comes down to it, if it's a player that has those items versus a player who doesn't, generally it's the player who has them who's going to win the battle, and uh, in the later parts of the game, when bigger battles are won, those are where ga whole games are won or lost. So, a little bit... I don't think it's time uh, more for creeping by Crazy Cat. Looked like he maybe was thinking about clearing out that gold mine, but he realizes both his heroes are level five, and there's only items and gold basically gained in, from clearing that expansion. He needs to uh, clear. He's looking actually. He's sending his wolves out. You'll notice right now the uh, invisible wolves to scout out <coughs> the gold mines to see which uh, gold mine that Ripa is ex uh, expanding at. His gold mine has since run out, and he's bringing his peons to uh, go. Before his expansion is completed, you notice his peons aren't just all lumbering or harvesting lumber or sitting around. He's bringing his peons uh, to the closest gold mine, which is to the north of his base, and uh, so they have to run all the way back to uh, his main base to return the gold. But still a good idea. Wolf just now scouted out this great hall uh, by Ripa. Only about 2,000 gold or so has been mined from this gold mine, so it's a really good find to find this so early. Uh, he should have found it actually a little bit early when it was under construction, but as soon as he sees it, he immediately goes in uh, to try to attack it. Uh, one of Ripa's wolves actually scouted him out, and he knows he's going to have to deal with Ripa's army uh, relatively quickly, whether Ripa's going to be town porter in land or whether he's going to be <clears throat> coming from behind. And Ripa, now he knows he's coming from behind because Ripa's right behind him, uh, chasing him with his Farseer and his whole army. Ripa now has some Torrens in his army. And at this time, it's a really bad situation for uh, Crazy Cat. He's lost his tech advantage. He's kind of stayed in Tier 2 and, while, as, while Ripa's gone to Tier 3. You know, he used Ensnare on all those peons to stop them from repairing. He immediately town portals out as soon as the uh, base is um, destroyed, but he actually leaves uh, a grunt and a wolf behind, so that's uh, bad news for him to lose that grunt, but still a good move to have lost uh, or to have taken out that expansion. You'll notice uh, some players will actually start that town portal before the expansion is uh, finished destroyed. You just kind of kind of got to uh, time it really good, so right as you town portal out, some of those last volleys get in of demolishers or last hits get in from the raiders and grunts to finish off the town, the uh, base there. So uh, now that he's had to play a little bit more defensively, you notice both heroes, uh, both army sizes are actually 69 versus 69, um, but Ripa's army's a lot more uh, uh, high tech. Uh, at this point, I think the Shadow Hunter should use a Tome of Retraining. Uh, definitely a good idea versus Torns. He does have the codes to help counter that, but versus high tier units, uh, those <clears throat> the Serpent Wards start to lose their effective. Uh, Kind of effectability, I guess is a good word. I don't know. Their usefulness. So it definitely would have been a good idea to try to get a Tome of Retraining if he had a little bit more foresight to uh, hex these Torn and individual units. Uh, would have been a little bit more beneficial in this fight right here, which he's actually going to lose. He Town Portaled in, and as soon as he got there, he used Disenchant on his Spirit Walkers to take out a Stasis Trap, which would have been really bad for him. Uh, however, uh, another Stasis Trap was laid quickly after that, right in the middle of his army, and he's in really bad position now. You notice how he's really surrounded by Headhunters, uh, which are Berserked and Upgrade now, 2-2, two, two, and Torn. Uh, he's doing a good job. He's able to take out one Torn, uh, a few Headhunters, but the Healing Wards are doing just an excellent job of keeping him these uh, now Troll Berserkers alive. And uh, the Troll Berserkers are going to really tear up these Spirit Walkers once they and the uh, Kodo Beast. The piercing damage actually does extra to Kodo Beast since they're unarmored. So although Kodo Beast is kind of a good counter to the um, Torrent, the Headhunters, which has always been in the mix for Ripa, are so easily good counter to the Kodo Beast. So Hex is definitely a better option there for uh, Ripa, or sorry, for a Crazy Cat. Um, actually for Ripa, I think uh, retraining his Fire Lord, which has just now died, uh, would have been a better idea to retrain um, to Soul, uh, Soul Burn, and which he actually just had cast, and uh, Incinerate. Incinerate does a lot more damage, uh, just that auto-cast uh, kind of uh, ability to uh, grunts and other units that stacks on a fire damage, and when you kill a unit with, uh, with them, Incinerate it actually does a little bit of an explosion on AE damage, which uh, would have been a little bit more effective. Uh, in that fight, you didn't see uh, barely any uh, lava spawns at all, and especially when you're going to go up against a orc opponent, or any opponent who has any type of disenchant or purge, or any, reason, any real means of getting rid of um, the summons. 
sure there's a lava spawn up, so I guess he went there uh, and did get the lava spawns. Lava spawns start to lose their effective, their usefulness <laughs> um, versus disenchant. So Tome of Retraining for both players may be a better option. Uh, I noticed a lot of human players using Tome of Retraining to retrain their uh, Archmage from Water Elementals to Blizzard in the late game. So maybe uh, other races can kind of benefit from that item as well, and conceivably the Fire Lord and the Shadow Hunter here. So uh, Crazy Cat uh, actually ended up selling his item, his uh, Vampiric Aura item, uh, Scourge Bone Chimes, to uh, build a, a few units. He's actually going in right now to try to kill this level 6 Farseer, because it's a big threat to him at the moment. Uh, one level fix 6 Farseer can, uh, played correctly, will easily end this game. However, uh, two level 5 heroes uh, uh, really uh, are going to be a difficult thing for uh, Rippa to handle at the moment. You notice now Rip is forced to, uh, since he lost expansion and he's really low on gold, is forced to use whatever peons he has available at his base to go to the south gold mine and um, uh, mine gold the way that... <coughs> the way that Crazy Cat was doing earlier. So Rippin now pushing into the base, thinking he has uh, he actually has a pretty good advantage. It's a 54-food army versus 29-food. However, Rippin makes a really critical big mistake here and brings his Farseer in right in front of Ensnare, and which cancels Earthquake, which is a channeling spell. And now he's being easily focused fired by Wolves and the Chain Lightning. And without any Potion of Invulnerability, Potion of Healing, or Town Portal, that Farseer is quickly going down. This is pretty much what lost Rip of the game. He had the advantage and he basically lost it just from that losing his farce here there. Really, really close game overall, and awesome use of Headhunters by uh, Rippa. You can actually see how, if you haven't done this in mirror matches lately, that Headhunters and upgraded to Berserkers actually uh, are really, really good units versus, uh, you know, other races too, but definitely versus in the Orc mirror. Uh, since the farce here died, uh, Rippa's farce here died, now we have a level 6 farce here on um, Crazy Cat's side. And the Farseer and Shadowhunter are now just chasing down each individual uh, Ripa's units. Basically, the game's over. It's just focus fire individual units here, take them out. He's at a severe economic disadvantage, and the Fire Lord is way past time. He's not even close to being revived, so all the all that uh, Crazy Cat has to do at the moment is take out this Altar of Storms to kind of say checkmate for Ripa. Still a good game. I'm going to go ahead and just end it over. Uh, I'm going to speed up the game to watch the rest of it if you guys want, but it's pretty much over from here. Heroes, in the end, are winning this for now. we got two level six heroes at the end. Um, definitely a really good game. Both players shouldn't be ashamed at all, at, at all about the game. It was really, really well played, and really, really cool, innovative use of those units. You do not see that very much in any matchup, and definitely not in Mirror, but anything you can do to throw off your opponent in a Mirror match is uh, definitely a good idea, and you'll see how well that actually countered the standard orc uh, I guess standard orc strategies there. I'm actually working on another audio commentary. I've been working on it before this one actually. Uh, it's going to be a video commentary guide like my Pudge one I did for Dota, but it's actually going to be for the real game. Uh, it's going to be featuring um, how to do surrounding techniques. And I'm going to really try to break it down uh, for each race. I don't know if I'm going to do uh, one race at a time or all races all together uh, in general to try to practice uh, surrounding. So if you haven't been surrounding lately, uh, hopefully when I can get this next audio commentary or video commentary guide done, it'll help you to uh, twist in a little bit of surrounding techniques into your game. Definitely a really good tactic to uh, learn how to do a little bit of micro-intensive and a lot of clicking involved, not as much strategy involved as far as unit selection, but uh, any units can be used to surround. Uh, there are some cool surrounding maps if you guys want to practice them. I'm going to include a link in my uh, video commentary guide to some, but if you look around the map section of wcreplays.com, uh, there are some surrounding maps that are pretty cool surround training maps uh, they give you units and you try to surround each individual unit and it has like a little like a looping function so every if you miss it you could try again until you actually get it so it's definitely good to practice so I um, hope you guys enjoyed this audio commentary on Orc for Sork and go ahead and leave comments if you want on the comment section here that on the front page of WCR or you can PM me your comments definitely appreciate all the good words good and bad whatever you guys want to tell me I take everything to heart and I want to do better at this job for you guys. Thanks a lot for listening to this audio commentary, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.